Hi guys, a uh, bit different this video. I suppose I'm copying what some other guys do. I'm just running through a bunch of stuff that I've either recently acquired or just acquired. I'm all the time trying to fill gaps, things that may not be needed daily but things that are in a sense essential for the uh, average shop. I'll tell you one funny thing while I think of it. Some time back I bought a small bench block, just a simple three inch one. Can I find it? <laughs> it's, I mean really. I was sort of trying to think back to when I unpacked it. I thought right where would I put that so that I can find it and where it's going to be useful and accessible. I can't find it. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, some of you guys who are a bit, bit like me, chaotic, as against those who are superbly organised, um, things seem to sprout legs. You know, you think of a logical place to put something, which sometimes in itself is a mistake, because it's like, oh, well, that's a safe, logical place, and then, of course, you forget where you put it, and it's mislaid. And this bench block, I just do not know. It'll turn up one day, I suppose, but if I need to use it, it's not much good when I can't find it. Isn't it crazy? I'm running out of space in here. I just acquired a set of uh, eight very lightweight shelves. You know, the sort of shelf things you put together, three foot wide, one foot deep. The only place I had to put it was at the end of my rack that holds most of my metal stock. And having put it there, I've now had to move out a load of sheet metal. Uh, and I don't know where to put that. I, I just don't know where to put it. And over the uh, winter months, I really must do a major sort out, which I've been saying since I put the darn ceiling up. Anyway, the uh, bits and pieces that I've discussed, will discuss, uh, I've had a bit of a spending spree because I recently sold an Argentinian 1911. Very nice collectible pistol. But uh, I decided it was time to move that on, so that released some funds. And these days when I get some spare funds they go into the shop all the time trying to make it better. So the things that I've covered, and I'm probably repeating myself on one or two things that are mentioned in the various clips. But uh, let me see what I got here. I got a new tap guide which I think is quite clever. Uh, a couple of import spray mist efforts which I want to try and set up for the lathe and mill. I got a used Indical uh, bore slash groove measuring device. Two more sets of gauge pins and uh, some tool tooling from Mesa tools. In fact, there's one that I referred to, I'll probably put a corrective text on it, one I referred to as being an import, in fact it was another Mesa tool. Uh, boring head insert, yes that was Mesa. Um, I was going to show you the bench block, <laughs> but not today. Um, I got a mighty mag, which I've put a, an indicator on. I've set that up on the drill press for occasional use when I want very precise depth measuring. I bought a new height gauge about two months ago. Uh, I've only got a very small surface plate. I may probably have to try and get a a granite plate just to give me something bigger although heaven knows where it'll be put. It'll probably be put away somewhere and when I need it it'll go onto the welding table. <laughs> um, wavy parallels just got those today and I got another thread repair file. So any, anyway it's a selection of stuff. Might bore the hell out of you but I think most of the items are fairly interesting much as anything, so you can see what this old fart's up to. Uh, talking of which, 
the acute sharpening is slightly on hold because I've got several maintenance jobs to do and or in fact you won't see no you can't you can't see from that angle but my old chuck which is shown up on numerous videos I'm waiting for a replacement uh, six inch bison and it's got the uh, well I call them removable jaws which of course any jaws are but these are the ones with the two cap screws on each jaw I forget the right term for that and I've got to sort out a back plate I couldn't find one anywhere that was going to suit me even one that I could re-bore and re-thread this lathe's got a funny uh, spindle thread it's one and three quarter by six TPI and a lot of other spindles are 8 TPI and different diameters so I want to try and use this back plate and at the moment and again I may have mentioned this somewhere else uh, the register on it is about eight, 6 or 8 thou larger than what I need for the new chuck so with some care and great care <laughs> uh, I've got a back plate which is threaded for the spindle so we'll hope to do a changeover on that which I'll probably document and then try and get back to the acute sharpening stuff and see where we go I've got enough to keep me busy for the next two months I should think at least if not more <laughs> all right here we go here's something I found on eBay <clears throat> which looked interesting I wasn't quite sure how it was going to work out from the picture but actually, so far, it seems to be pretty darn good for a, a specific purpose. And that is acting as a tap guide. Very often I start things off in the uh, mill or the drill press chuck. But this looked interesting. I think it's come all the way from India. It was about 20 bucks and the shipping was ridiculously low I think it's about six bucks shipping <laughs> uh, it came DHL via USPS anyway there it is you've got this piece with two inspection slots on the side uh, you probably can see in profile there I'm just trying to make sure it's visible there's a V transverse V so you can put this on a piece of round okay and if you've got a center line or just visually see your drilled hole and then otherwise just on a piece of flat of whatever size so you've got a very a very well fitting sliding fit piston and barrel for want of a better expression I put a tap in here that is probably I think this is an M8, sorry, this is probably, it might be an M8, or is that an M6, I can't remember. Um, but the thing is, for very, very small taps, that's what I wanted it for, where you want absolute truth into the uh, hole, at least for the first few turns. In fact, you could probably use this for the whole depth. So once you've got it on your workpiece, and uh, set up visually and get it nice and solid on the work and then turn away I haven't tried it yet but I'm so far quite impressed the uh, sliding fit is pretty good it's probably very little slop at all it's probably about a thou and a half something like that pretty good and it also comes, if I undo that, just to take the uh, tap out, make sure you can see what I'm doing. And then inside, you've got a simple collet, which is covered in oil at the moment. And obviously the uh, you've got a taper on the collet nose 
and a taper inside there. So you've all together got two lots of collets. The one we've just shown you and another set for uh, small sizes. So that'll cope pretty well up to probably about M8 and down to pretty much as small as you like. The small collet I suppose that goes down to about 332, something of that sort. So there you go. Quite a useful addition, I think. Not necessarily used all the time, but for small ones, small uh, taps, pretty useful. If you look on eBay in, what category was it? Um, tapping guide or something? You might find it, but I think that's very good value. It would take me, take me quite a while to machine that if I made it. And looking closely, the uh, machining marks are very, very fine indeed. I've heard differing reports about these misting efforts. Uh, they're import ones, relatively very inexpensive, really. <coughs> so I got a couple of them, and I got to get some eight mil line there for the uh, air inlet. But altogether, they seem fairly useful. I'm trying to think now whether. I cannot remember whether it was Peter Weeks, Herb Blair, or somebody was setting up one of these. I really can't remember. And uh, I'm not expecting major things from this, but I think I want one for the lathe, one for the mill, just to have it available. So the mill one will probably be fitted up to a magnet somehow or other. And I only want it for very small delivery, but I've already got an oil drip. Uh, on the lathe which is quite useful and I've got one for the mill but uh, what I would like if I can control it well enough is to have a very small fine mist at low delivery so it's not drips it's just very fine mist that doesn't make things too messy and uh, whether it, it'll work with my sulphur based oil or whether I'll have to use some uh, soluble oil, I'm not sure somebody may have ideas on that. Anyway, that's something which I have to play with later on on the long list of to do. One other recent uh, score off eBay was this Indical. I've just put my own indicator on there and uh, it's got the uh, lockable dovetail. Quite pleased to find it. I don't know, looking at the prices, I suppose 35 bucks wasn't out of the way. Uh, obviously it's previously owned. And all the bits that matter seem to be there, except, except these little pieces here for, um, I think those are for the groove measurement because we're lo looking at a way to accurately check a bore or groove and this piece and I don't know whether it will focus can you see that little guy it's a short version of this one if I can pick it up and not drop it. So it's a short version of that fella. And the little screw, should, there should be not only two of those, let's zoom in a minute. So there should be two of those little guys and the screw needed for these magnetic tweezers. <laughs> Only got one of those. I probably can find a screw that'll suit but uh, I don't know whether I can find a, another one of these anywhere. If anybody's got any ideas. I haven't even looked into a source for that. But overall uh, pretty good. Uh, 
and as those who use these know, these these will extend. So the useful thing is with with some large bores you can deal with quite a oops, out of frame again, or to you can use some uh, get to some pretty large sizes. I know from when I used one that somebody else had, it took a bit of setting up. But uh, if accuracy is the deal, then it's another useful addition, I think. One other long promised addition in gauge pins, I mean they're not uh, the high cost type, they're probably type B I suppose, but they're uh, Supposed to be certified, triple O two, I think, minus. And this set was the quarter to half, which I think has been pre-owned. But uh, all the pins are there, and they seem all pretty good. I've got the two smaller ranges, the real mini ones, <coughs> and then uh, the other ones up to a quarter. And then the final set, I don't think I should go much bigger. Uh, this is a new set, complete with uh, certificate. They seem to be pretty, pretty good uh, tolerance. And they're adequate for what I need anyway. This takes me up to uh, 625. Any bigger ones, I suppose one day I might get the bigger set up to an inch. But uh, quite pleased with that. It, it, you know, it's one of those things that every shop really needs. But how often do you use them? Not exactly every day. But one of my small ones got me out of trouble recently. I shouldn't really be getting any more tooling, seeing as I've got masses really. I've got lots of uh, high speed steel chunks. But I got these from Mesa Tools. Um, I must have got something from them because they put a card in, but I thought these might add to the armory. This is a uh, insert boring bar, which is which is quite good for length. Although if I was going much deeper, I'd probably put in a bigger one. And then uh, a new thread cutting insert holder. And this one, it's a right hand. I didn't get a left hand as well. But uh, this one will probably serve for awkward corners and... I did try it for facing too, quite handy. So I think that's got some uses. I may get one of their others eventually. Whoops, I keep, <laughs> you know what, when I'm zoomed in too much, I keep losing the stuff. Um, so that just extends my choice. That's the main reason for getting them. Those of you who follow Randy Richards' channel might well have seen a very nice cut he made for his boring head. Very similar sort of profile to that. He, he showed the uh, machine he made it out of a piece of 4140 he had. But I actually got this before I'd seen his effort on, on the one he made. But uh, this is an import but handy to have uh, for the larger bores that I can stretch out to with the smallish boring head. Just something else to give choice. Quick handheld here, another import. I think I must be the king of imports. I've got a very old large vernier which has a 
heavy uh, machine base but it's not all that useful for height measurement much as anything because it hasn't got a carbide scriber this one so far I've used it uh, once I got it two or three months ago and um, quite pleased with it and also whilst I'm handheld this is one other uh, Edition. I haven't got, I've got a lock on the quill on the drill press, but uh, I've just fixed a piece of bar using a circle clip there, but uh, it's not something I need all the time. But if I've got critical, critical drilling to do, it's somewhere to mount a, an indicator. This is a mighty mag. You've probably all seen those, but it's quite convenient for that position. This gives me something to uh, register with. When I did a thread repair recently, which was the uh, 7814 thread on a steering pin, this was the only thread repair file I had and it hadn't got 14. It actually, it's called a new tricks. It's listed as USS and SAE threads uh, made by Reef and Nestor in Lycans, Pennsylvania. But this one, I suppose in some ways a slightly strange set of threads. It's got uh, 6, 10, 15, 26, 16, 20, 28, 32. So I've actually got two of these, well I've ordered two, this one came today and this one with the old one should cover me fairly well. This one's made by Jaw Manufacturing Reading PA and this is marked they call it a number one for SAE and this goes from we've got 13, 14, 16, 18, 11, 12, 20 and 24 so actually those two together for SAE threads should do quite well the other one that I'm waiting for is, uh, is a metric and I think that will cover let me see there'll be eight different pitches which should cover most of what I want. You see all the time I'm filling gaps trying to make sure I've got what I need when I need it. This just uh, came in it was something I've had in mind for quite a long time and I've gone ahead and got some. These are wavy parallels um, half inch and that goes through 10, 10 pairs and it goes up to inch and a half and I see two uses for these one of which probably is the usual whereby a pair of these in the in the vice jaws can help with awkward pieces but the other thing that I'm interested in really is uh, having a pair of these in the vice jaws to give me a height change because sometimes when you put in ordinary parallels and I've only got eight thick parallels uh, you put them in and they try and fall over and they don't support they support the edges of the work but not perhaps as big an area as these can so be interesting to see if these are going to be helpful some folks may have some and like them some may think they're a waste of time but I, I think they're going to be quite useful they're imports again if I hadn't said that, <laughs> it's pretty obvious. I just threw these in as an afterthought. Uh, moving some stuff around from place to place, so I'd forgotten these. Um, machinist Jacks. Very old box here. It used to belong to a late uncle of mine from way, way back. So you've got you've got sections. So you can get quite a 
few differences in height. The uh, cup sort of wobble top there is one option and you can take that out and put in a semi point top. As far as bases go I haven't really found out or remembered what these bases do. It's like a big wide slotty screwdriver isn't it? I have used them in the past but I've never used these bases. These just normally just uh, sit straight on the table, whatever. Anyway, just another bit of interest. They're pretty old and I think they probably go back to uh, pre-war even. Finally, uh, whilst we're on new bits and pieces, which I don't often cover, but I'm sort of adding a few up together. Um, I got this R8 holder for ER40. Probably don't need to go as large as the R40, but I decided to go that route for two reasons. Partly so I could get, um, I've got a one inch collet here and my R8 collet series, I think it stops at, uh, how far does it go now, seven eighths maybe the largest. Yeah, I don't think it goes any further than that. But I have had odd occasions where I want to get something inch and uh, that's quite a nice holder. And not long ago I also got um, an R8 to, what was it, R8 to number two Morse. I think it was. I've got one or two old mills that are on a Morse just to you know again give more choice really. Anyway that's probably it for the bits and pieces for the time being. Alright well thanks for watching that lot if you got through to the end here. Um, I'll hopefully be back fairly soon with some other something and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.